World Sports Action presents the official Football League video, Saves Galore. Welcome to Saves Galore. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the work of the men who really make the difference between success and failure, the keepers. We've gathered together 101 top saves for you, involving the likes of Peter Shilton, Neville Southall, and Steve Sutton. And to analyze those saves, we have with us a genuine goalkeeping great. He knows a thing or two about keeping the ball out of the net. Clayton Backmore with a shot! Turned away superbly by Clements. Well, ample proof, as if anyone needed it, uh, Ray Clements knows what he's talking about. Ray, you're going to be looking at over 100 saves for us in the next hour or so. What is it, from your point of view, that makes a good save? Well, first of all, I'd like to see the goalkeeper in the right position to make the save, and then to have to do something exceptional with his body or a reflex save, or maybe a piece of bravery going down at somebody's feet. But the first and most important thing, I think, is actually to be in the right position to make the save. So let's see the keepers who got it right in August and September. Among the best are super saves from Southall, defender turned keeper, Steve Grit, star stand in, Mirandinha denied as Boulder blocks the Brazilian. We start with Luton's Les Seeley. Sterling's the target, over he goes, and the referee's given a penalty. George Tyson saw that differently to those Luton defenders. So, Sterland against Seeley, and the keeper saved it. Smith, We're giving Nevin a taste of his own medicine, and McDonald too. This is David Smith going on, brought down by a combination of Watson and McDonald. Coventry have a penalty. Brian Kilcline loves to blast them. And Southall seemed to move early to me, but the save stands. Regis jumping for this one and beating Watson. Bannister! Oh, that's a terrific save by Southall, changing direction. Downs. And Southall was there again. Beardsley coming away from McGrath to make the pass possible and now trying to get in beyond him. It bounced awkwardly for Bruce. It'll come for Barnes. And Leighton really rescued Manchester United then. Kevin Moore's missed it. Harper! Bailed out by the goalkeeper, Southampton then. Ashley Grimes takes the free kick, and would you believe it, he's laid Foster out, and Luton have given right out a terrific chance which he hasn't been able to take. Extraordinary episode. Well, the injury bad enough to force Boulder out of the game, and Steve Grit is the brave soul volunteering. Words of encouragement from Paul Miller, and Gritz will face the firing line. Smith. Regis! Oh, I say, that's a marvellous save from the standing keeper. It was a good header. Somehow, Grit got to it. An early ball in from Cork, and that's a terrific save by Pears. Well, Mel Sterling's got a useful long throw. Hurst. Oh, and Seaman has really had some outstanding moments in the first half. This time it was Siggy Jonsson. And Seaman again came up with the answer spectacularly. Keown forward. McAnally's the target. Nicely done. And here's Tony Daly. Great save by Steve Sutton. Mirandinha available. Oh, Nutmeg, you <laughs> enjoyed that. Andy has a go. Andy was close. Now he barely stepped out of the centre circle. But he shoots from 
any angle and any range. And that time he was well on target. Good save. And he's away. He's got the legs on Ratcliffe. And again. And Southall, not for the first time this afternoon, is called into action. Stuart Robson's chip. Rossinia getting up at the far side. Quite a muddle in there. Hilton trying to get a turn on the ball. And Leighton made a very good reflex save. And it's just gone over the top. What an amazing tussle that was. In the midst of it all, a superb reflex save from Jim Leighton. Well, Ray, deep down, I think most people fancy being a goalkeeper. But it became reality, didn't it, for Steve Grit of Charlton Athletic. And he did pretty well. Yeah, I think it actually shows that um, most people could actually make great saves. Uh, the incident that comes up when Steve Grit goes in goal, um, the ball's played in, uh, and there's a very powerful header here, but Steve Grit's actually in the right position and throws himself and just gets the slightest touch there and deflects it onto the crossbar, and it goes over. Um, and you can see saves like that sometimes in a Sunday morning on the park, but uh, the great goalkeepers are the ones that do it consistently uh, and also make fewer mistakes as well. That takes us to the first of our goalkeeping disasters. The bloopers. Brian's blunder, or was it? Yes, it's a classic situation. The ball is played over the top, uh, and Horn comes running out. I feel he's actually shouted to Dawes to get out of the way. But Dawes, rather than running across the face of McAnally, has actually run across the face of the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper's really got no alternative but to hit the ball against him. Uh, and we see the end, the end result is the ball in the back of the net. But uh, I feel that the goalkeeper's been a little bit hard done by there. Horn embarrassed, but not guilty, in your opinion. Correct. In October, Middlesbrough's keeper turns it on. A pair from pairs. Everton frustrated as Segers stops Sheedy. It's fast becoming the Southall show. Let's start with the Gunners, number one. Let the senior run a long way. John Lukic just managed to solve the puzzle then for Arsenal from Rossinia. Bannister. That was good play. Speedy! Ripley. Slaven. It's Ripley. And only a Grizovic at full stretch prevented it being five. Sharp. Control it, Sheedy. Sagers rapidly becoming a favourite here. He's got more problems ahead, though, and he's in the right place again. Hamilton battling away with Dickens, and Hamilton's won it too. He's got Slavin in some space to his left. Here is Bernie Slavin. Hamilton again. And here's Burke. Good strike and a very good save. Ince has got a foot in. Possibilities here for Kelly. Well, he's taken the shot early, and Nicky Johns had it covered. Ratcliffe standing firm, as indeed as Watson. Ratcliffe in there again. It might come for McAnally now, though. Inside is Platt. And somehow they keep it out, thanks to a stupendous piece of goalkeeping by Neville Southall. of getting that second important goal then Aston Villa and here's Price crosses a good one Daly stopped again by Southall two astonishing pieces of goalkeeping there by Neville Southall and there's another one but the first two saves were quite exceptional one from David Platt McAnally played it in Platt and a great reaction there by Southall and then the other one, after Price had made such a good run, and it comes to Daly on the far side, and there's that man Southall again. Regis stretching. He's got Burrows forward supporting. Jin! Hooper got across well. Good stop. Full stretch by Pears, who had no time to see it from Harford. He's all putting some nice stuff, a lovely passing movement. And uh, McClare 
and it's well saved by Southall. Hughes is going in and very, very nearly forcing it home. Stephen crosses in there again. O'Brien winning it first. McClare, can he just touch it on for Hughes? Inside his own half and he's onside. Mark Hughes stopped superbly by Southall and whacked away that time by Vanden Howe. What a finish here. A great break by Hughes. They played it out superbly to him. And, uh, of course, some superb goal being again by Neville Southall. Ray, it's turning a bit into the Neville Southall show, isn't it? He had a magnificent month in October and some superb examples of his all-round skills. Yes, I mean, Neville has been the pick of the first two months so far, and uh, you looked at all those saves then, you couldn't look anywhere else but Neville's saves. I mean, the first one that comes up here, we see McAnally laying the ball into Platt. He makes a very good control, and Neville Southall does so well to stand up, and then yet again he makes a reflex save when the ball is actually behind him. Um, very difficult saves to make those, but he's managed to do it. And here we see the ball being crossed in, and Neville's position corrects at the near post, makes great pace to the far post, and then he's in the standing position, or set position, to then make the save. Because if he'd still been running forward at, that, uh, at the winger as he hit the ball there, he would have been very difficult to dive and make the save. But because he's got to the right position, which we talked about right at the beginning of the programme, and he's set himself, he's made yet another marvellous reflex save. We've got to move on to our blooper section now. You exonerated Millwall's horn last time out, but I think Villa's Nigel Spink uh, might have to plead guilty to this one. Well, he's a friend of mine, but I don't think I can actually stick up for him on this occasion. Ball over the top yet again, and out comes Nigel, shouts to Price, and uh, as he clears it, he takes his eye off the ball because I think Williams actually turns his back. He wasn't expecting to get the ball. Uh, Miss kicks it slightly, uh, and we see the end product, a very embarrassed Nigel Spink rushing back to try and clear it off the line. In November, Luton are denied as Oggy halts Harford. The Saints keep are still going strong. Burridge tames the Lions. At the city ground, Sutton saves face. It's, it's probably a little bit hard for people like George Graham, managers to understand. Here's oh, the back pass by Walker. Marwood's in. A penalty given as Sutton brings him down. It was never, ever going to reach the goalkeeper. Sutton took the man quite clearly. And now Brian Marwood with a chance of making it 1 1 versus Steve Sutton. A brilliant save by Sutton. To the delight of the City fans. And Steve Sutton, the hero of the moment for Forrest. As Marwood strikes it very firmly, Sutton springs away to his left. And again, our camera at the back of the other goal. Close up there of a vital moment for Forrest. And it's Hodgson chasing through the centre against Pat Van den Howe, and Hodgson is the quicker of the two. And problems for Everton, and more problems because a penalty has been given against Van den Howe. Sharp and Reed protesting. Well, it's Megson against Southall. Everton past against Everton present. And the current hero prevails. Johnson, Harford's the target. Oh, Harford again. Grzovic did well. Here's Davenport being allowed to go, although he does have help on the far side. Still, he goes on. Oh, Lukic made a very good save. Here's Hayes, the substitute. It's a bit messy in there. Merson and Pears worked wonders. The call, setting his sights. That's a very good save from McKnight. Sheringham's drawn two across with him. And Ray Wallace has miscued. O'Callaghan and Statham had to knock it behind for the corner after Burridge pushed out the shot. Ray Wallace betraying some inexperience here. And O'Callaghan was on it in a flash to make life awkward for the goalkeeper. 
Cascarino. Stevenson. Cascarino and Sheringham racing into the centre. It's Sheringham. Oh, brilliant save. The ball seemed to gather pace on the bounce from Sheringham's header, but somehow Burridge got there. This is Mill taking on Cornwell. It's a terrific cross, and Besant matches Hughes' header. Experience is vital for a goalkeeper, and John Burridge, who's been around for many, many years, is still uh, doing the business on the south coast for Southampton. Yes, it's debatable who's the oldest, actually, John or myself or Schiltz, I'm not too sure. But John has been a, a great goalkeeper, played around the leagues for many years. By looking at him, you know he models himself on Peter Shilton. Uh, and we see an incident here in the Millwall game when Jimmy Carter crosses a very, very good ball in. Uh, and Teddy Sheringham gets on the end of it. And the header doesn't look too powerful to start off with, but it picks up pace and takes a terrible bounce. And really, John Burridge does remarkably well with his right hand to get it away, because he's actually anticipated the ball is going to come low, and he's dived for a low save. The ball was shot above him, and he's, he's shown what great agility he's got to, and reflexes to get his right hand up and knock the ball away. Well, let's talk about Steve Grizovic a big pal of yours after all those years you spent at Anfield and keeping pretty well for the Sky Blues at Coventry. Yes, he's done very well since he was transferred from Liverpool and we see in this particular clip uh, how, what a good goalkeeper he is really. The ball is played into the box there and Mick Harford makes a challenge for the ball. It drops to the edge of the box. We get a shot in there from Kingsley Black. It's deflected. Big Steve has to adjust his feet and uh, Mick Harford there has the shot, and as we can see, Augie not only gets across to it, managed to hold on to it as well. So uh, I'm pleased for Augie because he's, he's always worked extremely hard, and uh, you know he's actually, over the last couple of years, got himself onto the fringe of the England squad as well. So that just shows what hard work can do for you. Now December. You can't keep Southall out. It's Neville again. The Saints stop Newcastle as Flowers foils the Magpies. Meantime, at West Ham, there's some McKnight magic. We begin at Highbury with Mike Hooper with Winterburn, played inside now for Richardson, and then Thomas, Merson, Richardson, Smith again, Rocastle shots! That must have moved a lot in the air because Hooper moved, didn't actually get his hand to it, it seemed, but it cannoned off his chest, and a fiercely struck there by David Rocastle, oh, the deflection was from Nickel. Looking to get away and just touched behind. In fact, Hooper, yes, the referee's pointing to the corner flag. Hooper flung himself at that. Excellent piece of work by Brian Marwood, providing Arsenal with the corner. Hooper just getting that touch to it, as you can see. Strachan, Hughes will chase. Oh, and Pig's under hit it, and Mark Hughes! Nine goals in his last 11 league games before today. And a chance to keep his prolific run going. Presented to him by Peak, Denied to him by Grizovic. Baseball this cue there. Suddenly it's three against two for Liverpool. Orgic is onside. The flag has stayed down. Barnes is up alongside him. And Barnes! Oh, superb piece of goalkeeping. What a fabulous footballing moment that was. I think everybody in this 44,000 crowd was, or at least the Liverpool section, was about to scream goal. Played in nicely there by Aldridge, well met by Barnes. A magnificent piece of goalkeeping by Southall. Madison, it's an interesting ball. Danny Wallace really connected. Spurs with players over here, Waddles in, over he goes, and play waved on, Stewart's free on the far post, that's a great stop from Alan McKnight. A chance now for Southampton to clear their lines. No, <laughs> Newcastle come again. There are players spare on the far post, one of them's McDonald, great stop from Tim Flowers. It's a lovely deep cross, good header, and Flowers did just enough.
Well, that's a penalty. Walsh bundled over, no doubt about it. Fenix kick. Seely's kept it out. Stewart. And, well, catalogue of errors, really, from Tottenham's point of view. Marvellous save from Seely. He was up to readjust as Stewart thundered a drive in. And Fenix puts the second rebound over. Here's Keane. That's interesting. Rosinha! Oh, it's a very good save from Bob Boulder. Boulder's kick. A lot of distance on that too. Humphrey. Campbell. And Mackenzie arriving. McKnight this time showing what he can do. Ray, at the end of uh, saves galore, you're going to nominate your save of the season and I would think this one from Neville Southall against Liverpool has got to be in contention. It's got to have a chance I think yes in the old derby game and we can see here that uh, John Aldridge breaks down the right hand side we can see Neville in the perfect position there that if he tries to drive the ball across him he'll be able to make the save but John Aldridge does the unselfish thing squares it back and John Barnes I'm sure was looking to run away and score uh, with his arm raised there but Neville Southall somehow not only does he get across there but shows remarkable reflexes to turn it over. Although the ball was going in the middle of the goal, it's still a remarkable reflex to get it over with because John Barnes really got a lot of power in that shot. And for our blooper, perhaps a bit unkindly, we, we've gone for Alan McKnight at Norwich and again it underlines once you make a decision as a keeper, you're either a hero or a villain. Yes, it's an unfortunate one. There's a little harsh on Alan, but uh, it is a bad decision. The ball is played through here. It looks as though the West Ham player actually could have got there, but he saw Alan McKnight coming out, stopped, and Alan was never going to get there. And as we see at the end, uh, the ball is just took nice into the net. But I think if Alan had made the decision to stay at home, then uh, the number 12 for West Ham there would have actually got and cut the ball off. Into the new year, it's the Forest keeper again. Sutton at the double. You can't ignore England's number one, Shilton on the spot. And the Canaries thank their keeper. Brian guns down Millwall. Once again, we kick off with Mike Hooper. Hughes on the turn. Oh, against the post. Robbins, a brilliant save by Hooper. Stewart, Paul Allen, and Wallo! Now Stewart, two great pieces of goalkeeping, and three by Steve Sutton. What fabulous keeping there. <laughs> Paul Allen here, plays the ball for Wobble. And now Stewart looks as though he might have a go. And uh, Sutton refused to be beaten. Still pressure on here, and Boulder did well there. There were a whole mob of Charlton defenders trying to come out as Rhoda got the shot away. And Boulder may well have been unsighted. There's Mirandinha again. <laughs> Beautiful skills, but he's going to have a shot, and he's tested Boulder. But that's typical Mirandinha. Delights with the skills, but very much an individualist rather than a team player. Various options there, but there was only one in his mind. Okay. Now Steve. He's a slippery customer. That's a foul by Mark Wright. And Queen's Park Rangers have a penalty. Earned by the sheer ambition of Mark Steve here. And Wright tripped him. Next to be Simon Barker. But Shilton up guessed him. Can Sheringham get in? Trying to get doors in. Callahan's hit him! Magnificent save. Super save by Gunn. A really bright move by Millwall. And Callahan, Callahan's so close to making it 2 2. Sheringham with a little uh, run here. Doors with a delightful little cross. There's O'Callaghan's header. And some really acrobatic and valuable goalkeeping by Brian Gunn for Norwich. 
Mascarino jumping for it. Herlock getting in there as well. Might be anyone's. And Cascarino was lying in there. And somehow that failed to go into the Norwich net. I think that was another blind gun save. It was, well, if it was, it was an astonishing save. Well, we can have a look at it again here, Brian. Cascarino getting in there, yeah. Good reactions again from the Norwich goalkeeper. And here's Fila. Gordon turning it in! Oh, a superb! Absolutely superb piece of goalkeeping there by Brian Horn. No wonder he deserves a pat on the back. And the first real flash we've seen from uh, Dale Gordon. I thought you were going to see it from Flash Gordon. Well, I think they called him that, don't they? But uh, Phelan did well. There's the back heel. And just look at this excellent piece of goalkeeping. Oh, Callahan with it. The little flick on. Herlock. Oh, saved superbly again by Gunn from Terry Herlock. And Norwich just happy to bang that one away. Out of harm's way. Herlock shot. And some great people. Well, Ray, good to see your old England sparring partner, Peter Shilton, in the video for the first time. We've got some great Peter saves coming up a bit later on. But from this sequence, you picked out uh, Steve Sutton of Nottingham Forest. Remarkable stuff against your club Spurs. It just actually shows how quick and agile you have to be. They say you don't need to be fit to be a goalkeeper. Believe me, this incident shows how fit and agile you need to be. The first incident happens when Paul Allen here threads a nice ball through to Chrissy Waddle. Good strike at the ball from Chrissy and uh, Steve sort of knocks the ball out straight to Paul Stewart who immediately drives the ball back low to his right, down again, up on his feet again, rebounds to Chrissy Waddle and I think we'll see by Steve's reaction in a minute that he realises how lucky he was that ball came back to him from Chrissy Waddle and uh, that's the bit of luck that all goalkeepers need. You can have all the ability in the world but if you don't have a little bit of luck then things don't happen for you. Having watched you and Peter Shilton in training, I know you practice that aspect incessantly, don't you? Going down and getting up very quickly to get the next save. Well, it's so important. It's impossible, no matter what class of goalkeeper you are, that you're going to catch everything. There are going to be some balls that are hit so hard that you're just going to be able to knock away. And then you've got to get back on your feet and try and make a second save. So it's a very important part of all goalkeepers' training, that work. Ray, Norwich City had the best season in their history. And one reason for that was the fellow at the back, Brian Gunn. Yes, he had a particularly good game against Millwall and made three or four excellent saves in it. But I just picked out this one to demonstrate really how goalkeepers have to shift their body weight and move their body through the air. The ball is played out wide here. Uh, and then the cross comes in. Now, from that position, Brian Gunn has been at the near post, has gone to his left, and then he's had to change direction and go back to his original position to touch the ball over the bar. So it shows that how your body weight has to be moved very quickly from one side to the other and how you have to change your, the position of your body very, very quickly. Blooper time, Ray. The Norwegian Eric Thorsvet, who you recommended to Spurs. You've done this deliberately for me, haven't you? <laughs> Couldn't leave it out, could we? I think he picked his home debut, didn't he? Unfortunately he did, yes. In the Knott's Forest game we've just seen Steve Sutton making the save. Uh, we can see it coming up here. The shot comes in and it's straight at him really. Um, he doesn't get his hands right behind the ball. He dips his body before he needs to. Um, and as we see here, it goes straight through his hands and into the net. I would just like to say that if we look to the top right hand corner of the screen, you just see me falling off my seat having recommended him two weeks previously to the club. <laughs> In February, there's some spectacular stuff from Luton's keeper. Seeley stops the hammers. A Littlewoods Cup thriller. Bristol City's Keith Woff wows them. And Forrest get in on the act. Sutton stars too. Spackman. Reed, well played. The two new acquisitions full of promise for Queen's Park Rangers there. And look at Peter Reed go. And he set up a chance here for Andy Gray. In terms of uh, territorial play, Luton at the moment having the edge. Priest again towards Harford. He went over Gale, the overhead kick saved by McKnight again. Devonshire putting it in towards Rossini on the far side. Oh, a great save by Seeley. It was 
late, but it very nearly brought something for West Ham. A good jump and a spectacular save by Seeley. Parade. And now Galvin. And Neil Ruddock has conceded a penalty on his debut. Sterland has drilled it straight at Burridge, who kept it out. Wright struggling to get there, watched by Sharp. Williams with a terrific volley. And maybe that's a sign of things to come in terms of the quality of the goalkeeping. It was very well met by Geraint Williams, but Neville Southall was alert and made the save look comfortable. It certainly wasn't. Gray. And still Gray. Is this his first goal for Rangers? It's the old Rangers player, Phil Parks, who defies him. Roder. Newcastle finishing with a flourish. Or is it to be Middlesbrough? Davenport breaking now. Ripley's ahead of him. Burke has made a run. This is Mark Burke. Burke with a chance here. And fine save from Wright. And Burke really nearly did have a storybook contribution to this game. Came on to set up the equaliser. So nearly grabbed the winner as well. It's a good build-up and a lovely ball to Burke. And a good shot. Well, I don't think Walsh will get to that. Walker, but he's given it away again. It's another mistake in the Forest defence to McLaren. Looking to get that popped in there. It came off Hodge. Gallius with a shot. Oh, a marvellous save by Sutton. And here's Terry Wilson for Nottingham Forest. Touched in by Parker. Hodge is in there as well, playing it back to Parker. Brilliant save. Great save by Keith Watt. Well, is it Clough number nine? Pierce, number three. It's Pierce. Oh, a great save! Wilson's in there! And it's wide. And another chance has gone away for Forrest. But a brilliant piece of goalkeeping by Keith Watt. Ray, fans and commentators often say, great save when a keeper flies across the goal and tips a ball over. But you've picked out a save here that most people might view as commonplace. Yes, well, I've always said that the great goalkeepers make the difficult things look easy because they're in the right position at the right time. And the save we'll see in a moment is one of those saves, really. It's a save by Neville Southall yet again, but I think it's a particularly good one. We can see now as the corner kick comes in from Derby, the ball is headed out here, and Williams gets on the end and hits a, a superb volley with his right foot, comes through a load of bodies, and yet Neville, seeing it late, not only gets his body behind it, but hangs on to it as well. And he does make it look so easy, but believe me, having been in that position lots of times myself, they're not easy, I can assure you. And another thing that's especially hard for you keepers are deflections, and Forrest Steve Sutton are just tremendously well here. Yes, it's in the uh, game against semi-final League Cup against Bristol City, and it does show the problems you have when there are loads of bodies in front of you. Anything can happen. And we can see here, as the ball comes into the box, it's flicked on, headed out, and again, it's, it's struck on the half volley. It looks to be going straight to Sutton, but it's deflected, and again, he has to adjust and react. And again, he shows the, uses the full length of his body and gets hold of the ball very, very safely. But again, really, he's made that look a lot simpler than what it actually was. It's into spring, and at Villa Park, there's a stunner from Leighton. Norwegian gymnastics from Eric the Athletic and no less than six from Shilton, starting with this one. Williams, taken from him by Wise. Good save by Shilton from Krasinski. Boulder anxious behind his wall, Proctor tries one, and the keeper got across very well indeed. He thought he got all the angles covered, need to move quickly to keep that out. Stewart jumping, here's Mabbott, he's away from right, Shilton's made a tremendous save. Waddle, and here's Paul Walsh, and again Peter Shilton down quickly, and he needed to be still the master, Peter Shilton, 
and it's not difficult to see why. Page picking it up here, looking for McAnally on the far side. David Platt's in the middle, Ormond Troyd with his height as well. Platt with a header, great save! Well, there's an inquiry among the Manchester United defenders there. Stevie Bruce uh, was saying that somebody should have been picking him up. We'll see, it was a very good baller, and look at the space he's got by him. Yards of space, no United defender in sight. Clear shot, good save by the young keeper. That was a good save, Brian, because, uh, as you know, the ball flying low through the ruck of players, and we can see it from behind the goalkeeper. It was a firmly struck shot. Just, ooh, just degraded the wall, a good save. Gray, Callaghan. Here's the cross. It eluded Robson. McAnally! Oh, a marvellous save by Leighton. That'll tell you how good it was. McAnally hit that with just about everything. Applause from the bench. And that goes down as one of the great saves of the season. It was a cracking shot again by McAnally, set up by Platt. And they really rifled it. That was a super save. Blackmore. Tony Sharp. Alf Milne away on the left. Here's Blackmore again. A little dink through. McClare's in there. Oh, fine save. Good reactions there from young Lee Butler. McClare was through and had just changed the direction of it from close in. But the reaction of the young keeper was excellent. The expense of a corner. Ripley. It's a sharp turn, a sharp shot. Comes to Beardsley. Trying to pick out Barnes. In turn, finds McMahon. Trying to get a right foot shot there. Well saved by Grizovich. Really getting his quota of goals and shots on target from the midfield. On six goals this season in each of the last three games. He's had one disallowed already tonight. It's gone past Hurdon. There's his cross coming in off Borrows now. Staunton's up there looking for a bit of the action. And tipped over well by Obrizovic. That young fullback has been determined to get on the score sheets, has been close a couple of times, and needed Grzovic at his most agile to deny him here in the last minute of the game. Foul on Barnes by Fennick. Liverpool's free kick. Taken quickly, Barnes. He's done well. Oh, and the outside flag goes up again as Oldridge came in at the far post, but that was good goalkeeping by Torsvet. And he deserves the crowd's applause. But Aldridge would have been a judge offside even if he'd made contact here as Barnes curled that ball wickedly left footed to the far post. It's Lee McMahon. Great stop from Peter Shilton. McMahon really caught that. Staunton. Barnes is square. There is John Barnes. And Aldridge is on the far side. Another very good save from Peter Shilton. Well, Ray Neville Southall of Everton and Wales dominated the early sections of saves galore. And now Peter Shilton of Derby in England has come into his own. Yes, I think we've seen actually six in this month, but uh, the one that I've picked out is one against Tottenham Hotspur. I think it shows all his experience and that his reflexes uh, are still as good as ever. The ball is played up here to Paul Stewart, and uh, Paul Stewart knocks down a lovely ball into Mabbott's path. I think Mark Wright will be a little disappointed not to win that ball, but Mabbitt hits a great left foot shot, and Schultz gets to the position correctly, stands there, and then makes a great reflex save. You can see Mabbitt actually looking at him there to say, how the heck did he save that? And we're coming up shortly to your save of the season, and one from the Scotland keeper, Jim Layton, at Villa Park has got to come into consideration again. Yes, well, I think uh, these saves that we're showing now show why the goalkeepers are their national goalkeepers. We've seen a great one from Schiltz, and here we see Platt knocking the ball out to McAnally, and he comes on and strikes a superb right foot shot, and somehow Layton gets across and gets his left hand up 
and knocks it over the bar. I mean, that really is a tremendous save because there was so much power in McAnally's shot. He did so well even to see it, never mind get a hand to it. Great save. Eric Dorsved, the blooper last month, but now some excellent work for Spurs against Liverpool. Well, it's nice to show that he is a, a class goalkeeper, and I think this displays it. Not so much as it's a spectacular save, but shows how difficult it is for goalkeepers dealing with outswinging balls. And here we see Barnes getting around the outside of the defenders, whipping a ball away from Eric. He's got to make ground up to the far post, throw himself horizontal with John Aldridge flying in on him, keep his eye on the ball and hold on to it. Now, for me, that's, that's a very, very good save because uh, they're one of the most difficult balls for a goalkeeper to deal with, the ball that's drifting away from you. And he kept his eye on it and showed his agility to get across and get hold of it. And it's tough in a video like this to show one of the most important aspects of goalkeeping, and that is taking and dealing with crosses. Yes, I mean, because we're looking at saves virtually, but that's as near as we're going to come to seeing somebody dealing with crosses and showing the ideal way to deal with those crosses that go away from you. Blooper time, Ray. Stephen Pears of Middlesbrough takes responsibility and uh, drops a bit of a ghoulie. Well, it shows it's a form of a cross. We're looking at a corner taken from McMinn, in swinging corner, and obviously Pears shouts for the ball at the near post. You can see the fullback duck, and unfortunately Stephen just judges it a little bit incorrectly and just helps it into the corner of the net. And he has that horrible feeling laying outside of the goal with the ball inside the goal. <laughs> there is no worse feeling, I can tell you. Now April, and England contender David Seaman, safe as houses. Also Southampton denied by Brian's tremendous trio. Drama at Wembley with Sutton scramble. First goalkeeping veteran John Burridge. Ripley. They can't stop him getting in the cross. Here's Burke. Brilliantly stopped by Burridge. Paris. On by Dickens. Rosinha! Oh, great stop. Parker and Fashionu. The smaller man was the quicker. But Fashionu might come up with something now. Oh, terrific handling by Seaman. He really couldn't afford a fumble then. And David Seaman continues to look international class. Sutton going and using his fist to get it away. Gainer helped it away once again. Grimes driving it in and save. Ashley Grimes hasn't scored at all this season, but that was so close to giving Luton the start they wanted. And fine work by Steve Sutton in the Forest goal. Peak! Pace, right out. Nudge down, Des Walker. The second penalty of the game. A great chance for Neil Ruddock to make amends for giving away a penalty in the first half, but he can't take it. Waddle. Newton's cross. Howells again. What a terrific stop. Cockerell, who's never frightened to shoot, and warming Gunn's hands again. It's Cockerell. Well hit. Letizia. Letizia is after that, and he's onside. Possibilities here for Southampton. Appeals for a penalty. So, Braddock against Sagers. And the keeper saved it. Clear. Played for Robson. Good work by Agrizovic. That's the Robson trademark. That's unsuspected dash from the midfield and undetected. McClare found him beautifully. Robson on the end of it. And good work there by Agrizovic. 
Callaghan is square, so too is Chris Price. Here is Callaghan. Well hit and very well saved. Cotty. Played through by Nevin. Cotty, who really likes to take shots early like that when he's on the run. It was fed into his stride. And it was an excellent effort and well held by Sutton. Wilson only scuffs it as far as Sheedy. And Sharp. And Sutton against the bar. My word. Steve Sutton looks skywards. And thanks some divine help, perhaps. Sutton did very well to stop Sharp's shot. He'll push it up onto the bar. And then as Cotty followed in, Sutton somehow stopped his momentum. And you thought he must carry the ball in, but he didn't. I don't think many keepers have worked harder at their game than John Burridge. And another example here, if you put the hard work in, you'll get the benefits. Yes, without a shadow of a doubt that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, John models himself on Schiltz. And Schiltz is a tremendously hard worker in training. And John probably works even harder than him. And there's a thing with goalkeepers that, that people tend to think that you need to be six foot or over to be a goalkeeper. And yes, it is an advantage to deal with crosses, etc., when you're over six foot. But John has proved that you can make more than a good living out of the game by being small if you're very quick and you're very agile and have great spring in your legs. And we see a save here coming up now against Middlesbrough when the ball is knocked into the box here. And Mark Burke controls it beautifully on his chest, knocks it down, and hits a lovely volley. And John Burridge, quick feet, great agility, right in the top corner there, manages to claw the ball out of the corner. All right, David uh, Seaman has earned a great reputation at Queen's Park Rangers. We've just seen agility from John Burridge, and now we see the importance of clean handling from David Seaman. Yes, it's no good having agility and quickness and bravery if at the end of the day when the ball comes to your hands, you don't catch it. And for me last season, David Seaman was possibly the outstanding English goalkeeper that I saw and in, in a lot of games that I saw over the season. And uh, the save we're going to see now shows what a great pair of hands he's got. Uh, we see Fashionu will get the ball in a minute. Parker makes a poor pass there. The ball is played in here to Fashionu on the edge of the box. He makes a strong run into the box and gets in a very powerful shot with his right foot. And we see Seaman perfectly positioned, gets hold of the ball and holds on to it. There's a slightest slip there, and Miller would have rolled the ball into the empty net. So it's a great save. And uh, he gave Fashionu nothing to shoot at as well, to be honest. But having said that, his positioning was right and his handling was perfect. And for our blooper, we return to Brian Horn at Millwall. And an indication from me, perhaps, here, just a slight loss of concentration, and it's fatal. Yes, possibly. I feel sorry that uh, we're going back to Brian because Brian is one of the most agile and normally has a very, very safe pair of hands. But unfortunately, we've had to highlight him twice in this video. And this one, as we can see, the ball comes in against West Ham. And we see Julian Dix hit a very powerful shot. It comes through a rook of players. Uh, again, the legs are not together. And again, it goes through the legs and into the net. Um, Brian, I'm sure, saw that ball very late. But having said that, he knows himself that really he should have his legs together to stop that from going through if his hands were not able to stop the ball. Finally May, and the Luton keeper, Alec Chamberlain's champagne performance. And that man again, Neville, naturally. Still doing the business at West Ham, the evergreen Phil Parks. Great save by Parks. Pingles had up. Sweeney took the throw quickly. And does his best to keep West Ham penned into their own area. Parks. And finally, played away by Dix. But Frank Pingle met a beautifully delivered ball by Brock, only to find Parks dropping quickly. Trying to get it down to Graham Sharp. Played wide for Sheedy. Sharp on the far side. Stevens in there as well. Sharp's in there too. Saved by Grubbelaar. And the ball coming uh, 
eventually hooked away by Ablett. Some very good work indeed by Bruce Gobelar. After Sharp appeared to have so much time in that Liverpool penalty area, Everton now with a free kick. Well, here's a chance again. He, he worked it well, didn't he? And that was a, a, a reflex hit there by Bruce Gobelar. Stephen Harrison hustled into a mistake there by Beardsley. He's got Aldridge up alongside him. Barnes steaming down the left. Beardsley's shot. Aldridge goes in. And somehow they get it away behind for the corner. <laughs> got a bit of spirit there between Aldridge, recognising some great work by Southall. The shot by Beardsley pushed away there by Southall. And oh, Southall, a magnificent save there. Jones. Young and then Shirtcliff. Good work from the Charlton captain. That's handball by Colin Walsh. And Wimbledon have a penalty. And Charlton are really dismayed. It's wise. Boulder with a fabulous save, which might keep Charlton in the first division. rosinia has gone on. Here he is. Oh, that's a very good save from Alec Chamberlain. Keane. Slater. Keane takes the return. Here's Slater again. Ward. Here's Harper. Bennett. For Hurst, but the control was superb. Oh, and it nearly beamed in inside that far post there, appealing for a corner Sheffield Wednesday, and they've got it. And David Hurst with the original cross shot here. Paul pushed it out, and Kernigan couldn't prevent it crossing the line. If only West Ham had played with this passion and purpose earlier in the season. Paris. And that's a push by Ratcliffe, and they've earned a penalty. This for 2-2. Two -two. And the responsibility rests with young Kevin Keane. Southall with a superb save, which might in the end mean relegation for West Ham. Ray, you were forced to, to give the game up at the age of 39 and you went on that long because of your enjoyment above all. And I think uh, an old foe of yours, Phil Parks, has maintained that enthusiasm. Yes, I mean, it just shows how long you can play if you, if you love the game and you've got enthusiasm for the game and you enjoy it. And uh, Phil Parks certainly, you know, he's rejuvenated really in this last year because unfortunately Alec McKnight had one or two mistakes and Phil's come back in and we can see here in this clip now he's still enjoying every minute of it as the cross comes in there uh, Pingle meets it at the near post powerful header down and Parks even at 39 gets down and eventually the ball's cleared you can see he's saying something to the fullback but as we cut to him now you can see that he's smiling all over his face and clearly enjoying every minute of, of still playing in what was then still the first division for them We've got to talk about Neville Southall again, and de deservedly so, and an absolutely stupendous double save in the derby against Liverpool. Yes, I think it was the first game, first derby game back after the disaster, and it was uh, Beardsley who made the original chance, being challenged here by Watson. It actually comes underneath Watson, so Neville could only have seen it late. He gets full stretch again, the full length of his body, and again shows that incredible agility that he has to get off the floor and get up and make a fantastic diving save, brave as a lion, at John Aldridge's feet. And, uh, you know, for me, Neville is just a bit special, and I think uh, this video has actually showed that. As a keeper, you can never relax on one save. You've always got to be up and alert for the next. That's right, yes. I mean, it's always nice to hold on to the first shot, as we've seen in some of the clips today, but it's not always possible. So you've got to be able to get off those feet very, very quickly to make second saves. We've seen 101 saves, I think it is, and I said earlier you were going to pick out the best one. It's a tough task and probably almost an impossible one, Ray. Well, I'm saying it's an impossible one, to be honest. Uh, I've enjoyed watching every one of them because every one of them has had something special about it. And I don't think it would be fair to pick out one that is the best. 
But what I would say is I think that uh, the video has displayed that Neville Southall last year was the best goalkeeper in Great Britain. Just spell out for us his attributes that we have seen here and that you admire most of all. He's got a very safe pair of hands. He is very, very quick around the penalty area with his feet. He commands respect from his players. He's exceptionally brave. And he has this wonderful attribute that great goalkeepers always have of not only making the difficult things look easy, but also pulling off the miraculous save which wins games for teams. And he has all that. Marcus. Graceball miscued there. Suddenly it's three against two for Liverpool. Aldrich is onside. The flag has stayed down. Barnes is up alongside him. And Barnes!